Yo, okay, hi. Um, does anyone mind if I put music on, actually? Let's just put some on in the background. There we go. It's just eerily quiet otherwise. Um, okay, so I am going to talk you through React 3 Fiber, uh, how I set projects up, how I build things um, for like interactive 3D websites. You know what? Before we carry on, like you may as well hit the subscribe button. Um, if you don't like it later, you can unsubscribe, whatever. But, you know, we're building a thing here and it just makes me want to make more videos, you know, just trying to get comfy. Anyway, so we're going to be looking at building this um, 3D website. Um, pretty simple start, but there's a few little nuances that are nice. So, for example, like when you hover over the can, you get this little like shimmer effect. Um, and what I want to talk about is how to set up a React 3 Fiber project. And I guess how we move objects on scroll is kind of a useful thing to look at. Um, and then probably a little bit of shaders because this is using um, GLSL shaders. Uh, so there'll be a bit of GSAP stuff in here as well. Uh, so let's get into it anyway. Uh, right, we'll start up. How are we going to start this? Uh, okay, so I've got a new project here. Tell you what, today in, in this in this part here, I'll just go through how I set up a React 3 Fiber project. So if you're kind of well versed in that, then you can just go on to the next video. Um, but I'm trying to make something that is good for uh, most people as like an entry point. So let's get started. Not with that. We're going to create a next app. Uh, So this will talk us through a bunch of things, a bunch of questions about our app. Uh, do we want to install that? Yes, we do. What are we going to call it? Let's call it YouTube One Juicy. And then I always put app afterwards. You don't need to do that. Uh, TypeScript. I don't really fuck with TypeScript. Um, I'm kind of a basic ass bitch making overcomplicated websites and we don't need to make it more complicated. So no to that. No to ESLint. Uh, Tailwind, I like. Um, didn't used to, now I do. So yes, we'll put that in. Source directory um, just comes as, as standard. So yeah, app router is like the latest version of uh, Next.js. So yes, recommend doing that. And don't know what that is. So no, that will uh, set up our next app over here in a minute. This is uh, Herbie Hancock on in the background, if you can hear it. Don't know if you can. And while there's loads, I'm just going to drink my coffee. Great. Uh, right. So this is the kind of standard setup for a next app. And there's a few things that I do um, just straight off the bat to set things up. So first of all, we're going to want to CD into uh, this app directory, juicy-app, because anything we install, we're going to want to put into there. We may as well install React 3 Fiber. So npm install 3 app. React 3, uh, like that, you know, set up as we mean to go on, like, and the other library that you're definitely going to need is um, React 3 Dry. Dry, if you don't know, it's just a, a heap of, like, really useful helpers. It's going to, like, speed up your development time loads. Uh, I have to say, I'm allergic to my dog at the moment. It's just come out of nowhere. So uh, sorry if I sound like snuffly or whatever. Okay, so that's the installs done. Um, we're also going to have GSAP as well at some point, so we may as well put that in. Lovely stuff. Now, as for the project structure, uh, this is what I generally go for. One sec. Um, so... In your app directory, no, in the source folder, sorry, we're going to create a components. And then inside components, I would just place all of these things. So hooks, that's going to be for useful things like, you know, I, I often use a um, like mobile detection hook, um, stuff like that, screen size hooks and all of that thing. So put them in there. Um, store. Uh, We'll probably use that. That's going to be for like um, state management. 
which we'll use zoo stand for, which we may as well install as well. Um, I don't actually know if we're going to use store on this project thinking about it, so we might not, but put it there just in case. Uh, what else are we going to have? UI stuff will go in there. And then I create a separate folder for three stuff as well. And then just in case, let's put a utils folder in case there's any utilities we want to make. Then in your three folder, um, you don't have to follow this by the way, but this is just my setup for every project. It's like how I like to work. Um, I put in main canvas like that. And we will also have a main scene. Now about the canvas, um, what do I want to say about the canvas? Not really much right now. Let's just get into it. So we're going to export our canvas like that. And then there's not really much we need to put in here other than we're going to contain it in a div. Um, and because we're using Tailwind, we can use this. Now the canvas element from React 3 Fiber just responds to the size of its parent div. Um, so we don't need to put any styling on the canvas itself. It will just kind of adopt this styling here. Um, we're going to make it fixed. We're going to whap it in the top and we're going to stick it to the left. Like that, that's going to be our div there. Uh, and then let's put a canvas element in there from React 3 Fiber. Uh, top tip, put shadows on. That's going to be helpful later. Uh, other things that I tend to put on is a DPR. Um, can't remember what it stands for, but it's, it's essentially your quality. Um, camera, you can set like default camera positions here. Because we're not really doing much camera movement in this setup, um, we may as well set a camera position like at the root level here. Um, for other projects, if you're moving the camera, I probably wouldn't do this, um, but we may as well just... I think it defaults to 0, 0, 005, but let's pull it back a little bit. Right, and that is your canvas there. Um, what else are we going to want in here? Uh, we're going to need some lighting, and for that I tend to use environment from dry, because that's just going to give us a late, nice little HDR um, environment. Again, top tip for you here, I wonder if I can find it. Um, just giving away all my files here and everything. Um, I might cut this bit out a little bit. Okay, so uh, I tend to use a HDR image. Um, I don't know how to explain this. <laughs> I've totally drawn a blank. Um, so, okay, normally you could do something like this. Uh, environment preset equals city, right? And that will bring in the city uh, environment from dry as a preset. The problem is, is that the, the HDR um, image that's used for that, number one is stored by somebody else. So if that goes down, then your scene will break. And number two, they tend to be quite um, heavy files. So what you can do is go to like, I don't know, like HDRI images, like Polyhaven, for example. You can download whatever, yeah, sure, take it all, man. Um, download whatever you want, like that one, that's nice. Um, and you'll see it's one and a half megabytes, which isn't ideal, right? But uh, if you go to, where would it be? Check this out in like the dry documents. Um, you can use a gain map basically, which is like way lighter. Um, and there's a link to it. I'm pretty sure, here we go. Oh, <laughs> God damn. Link and then probably another link somewhere free online encoder. That looks about right. Cool. Okay, that was a bit of a maze, but we get there. Uh, and then we're going to take the one and a half megabyte file, the HDR image, and we're going to convert it to a gain map. Save that. 
We could even do that as a WebP or a JPEG. I'm going to do JPEG. Oh, that's my dog having a having a go. The, the dog I'm allergic to. One second. Let's download that. All right, that was the delivery guy, no worries. Uh, did that download as a JPEG? Yes, it did. And look at that, that's 85 kilobytes. Um, so we can use that in our project over here. If we go, uh, where's our public folder? Ah, that's weird. Normally it installs a public folder. No problem, we'll just put one in. Um, but I've not really experienced that before. But anyway, we'll do public and we're going to have images uh, and then we're going to take our gain map here and put it in images and we're going to give it a name that doesn't look like that. Uh, let's call it runway because it looks like a runway. Then back in your... Oh, this was all in the wrong, wrong file. Sorry. Here we go. Main canvas. Put it in there. Main scene we'll use later. Uh, and then what was I doing? Yeah, preset over here. And then you can literally just use files equals images runway.jpg. And then you've basically just saved yourself like a absolute shit ton of loading time there. Um, okay, so we've got lighting in there. Let's go ahead and just put a test like thing in there. Uh, that'll do. God damn. What is this going to be? Let's just give it a mesh standard material. Cool. Now, in theory, if we run npm run dev like that, we're going to start. We're going to see some janky shit actually in a sec. Um, let's go to localhost three thousand. Okay, yeah, that's not the janky. Sh oh, okay, yeah, we haven't added our canvas to anything yet. So uh, we've got a canvas, we've got a box on it, we've got a light. We are now going to go to um, God. Loads of things have changed since uh, I last used, I last installed thingy. So if we did page.js like that. Um, that would that should be our main page here. If I saved refresh, that should just give us blank. Ah no, okay. Ignore all of that. I'll probably delete it. I'm looking in the wrong folder. Here we go. Page. That's is all of this stuff that you're seeing here. We can actually just go ahead and delete all of that. Boom. Like that. That will get rid of it there. And then what I do, top tip here, is I bring my canvas into the layout, which is the root file. I like my canvas to persist across all, um, all pages in my website. Um, so what did we call it? Main canvas, didn't we? There we go. Uh, the reason I like it to persist across all pages is because um, if you're like unmounting and mounting your canvas all the time, like when you change routes or change pages, um, it just it can cause some like janky shit to happen that's not really that great. Um, so I, I tend to find it's just better to have the canvas on everything. Um, then you can also just apply you know 3D, 3JS stuff to any page that you're on. So anyway, for now we'll just keep with that. But yeah, layout main canvas, and we should. Oh. I reckon I know what that is. Main canvas. I think that's meant to be that. Hmm, no, it's not. Shouldn't have to do this. Okay, it was both of those things. 
great stuff. There we go. Uh, so just to run you through my mistakes there. So box geometry, um, when we're using it like this, needs to be lowercase b. Do a capital B and it's going to fuck up. Um, and then this needs to be rendered on client side. Uh, so we need to add the use client tag at the top there. And now if you want to add a quick bit of interaction, let's just put in orbit controls from dry. Um, interesting. Okay, there we go. Quick refresh. And then our camera is orbiting around as we kind of click and drag. That is the basic setup for um, for a React 3 Fiber project. This is the basis of what we're going to use moving forwards. Um, probably what I would do is keep is move this box stuff, like any scene based stuff, I would move that into main scene over here. Um, look, if we just did main scene instead, we don't need canvas, probably don't need that. Um, don't need that. And then we're going to take away all of that stuff and go to main canvas. And now we can take out anything that's kind of scene based now we can put in our scene here. Let's just tidy that up, lovely. And then instead of, you know, this getting all messy, we can now just import main scene like that. So it's still the same, but it's just tidier. And now everything we do is gonna be a main scene. Um, so that is the starting place. I think the next thing we'll probably wanna look at um, in the next video is how, uh, how to set up scrolling and moving objects on scroll. So we'll probably, um, probably just kind of block this out with cylinder geometry uh, and then just work on this scrolling mechanism. Oh yeah, hit the subscribe button if you haven't. If you've made it this far, then fucking well done because that was sketchy as balls. But yeah, uh, hit the subscribe button. Tell me you like it. Um, don't tell me if you don't.